it's Miss Pink to here today on this rainy Monday morning. I hope that you had a wonderful weekend and that you were able to celebrate your mom however you chose to do that. Um, today for you I have a book by someone who's rather famous. Her name is Daddy Allen and she's an actress, a producer, a dancer, choreographer. Um, she basically does it all. <laughs> And um, this book is called Dancing in the Wings. And the illustrator is Kadir Nelson. He's actually illustrated a ton of books. He's a very, very good illustrator. I suggest you look him up and then you might see some other books that he's illustrated that you might like to read. So this book is by Miss Daddy Allen and it's kind of loosely based on her experience as a dancer. Um, so it's fiction technically, but it's, it does kind of speak to her experience as a dancer. So let's open it up and see what's going on in this book, Dancing in the Wings by Daddy Allen. Ever since I was born and could see, everywhere I looked, I saw dance. In the clouds as the wind blew them across the sky, in the ripples on a pond, even in the sea of ants, marching up and down their hills, dance was all around me. Dance was me. My mom calls me sassy because I like to put my hands on my hips and because I always have something to say. Well, if you had feet as big as mine, You'd understand why. You should join the swimming team since you got those long toes and don't need any fins, my brother Huey teased. I shot right back. At least I don't have that big forehead looking like a street lamp. Mama said, stop all that bear talk. You act so ugly sometimes. Huey, your big head is a sign of intelligence. And Sassy, your big feet will make your legs look longer and prettier in your ballet shoes. My legs were longer, all right. So long that when I went, that when I went to Tendu, point my toe at the bar, I tripped Miss Catherine, our teacher, who was coming down the line, looking the other way. Splat! She landed under the piano, her legs in the air. Ooh, it was so funny. Even she had to laugh. Sassy, she called out. I'm going to tie orange bows on those big feet. Sorry, Miss Catherine, I answered. But if you don't wear your glasses, you still won't see them. One thing for sure, because of my long legs and big feet, I could jump higher and spin faster than everyone else. I was taller than the rest of the kids at school, even the boys. At our recitals, all the other girls got to dance solos and duets and wear pretty tutus. I was too big for the boys to pick up and too tall to be in line with the other girls. So I watched from backstage, dancing in the wings, hoping that if I just kept dancing and trying, it would be my turn to dance in the spotlight. One day at the end of ballet class, Miss Catherine announced, Mr. DeBotto from the Russian school is coming next week to look for talented young people for the Summer Dance Festival in Washington, D.C. The whole room turned into a whirlpool of excitement as the sign-up sheet was posted. Everyone wanted to try, especially me. But as I wrote my name down, I heard two girls, Molly and Myrna, giggle. Myrna said, oh, please, she'll never make it. They said talent, 
not a Tyrannosaurus. My heart seemed to stand still. For once, I had nothing to say. I couldn't hide the tears I felt welling up in my eyes. So I just grabbed my dance bag and ran to the parking lot. I heard a familiar horn honk and turned to see my Uncle Red in his bright green pickup truck. Uncle Red had the whitest, tight, curly hair, smelled of cigars, and every day wore something red. A tie, a hat, a shirt, socks, maybe even his shoestrings, just something red. Why, of all days, did Mama have to send him to pick me up? Why today? I was not in the mood for his jokes or stories, but I quickly tried to dry my eyes and smile. I got a good one for you today, Sassy. What did the banana say to the monkey? Split! Ha 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 ha! Get it? Split! Banana split! I started to cry. Sassy, what's wrong? He asked. I told him what had happened. I'm just so much taller than the other dancers, Uncle Red. Sassy, he said, you gotta look at this as a gift. Being tall means you can see all around, so you can always find the right path to take. No, I said, it means I stick out like a big acne bump on someone's nose. I'll never get to dance. It's a waste of time to go to that audition. Listen, gal, said Uncle Red. If I was tall and pretty as you, I wouldn't need to wear red so people know it's me coming and going. All you got to do to make your mark on the world is walk into a room. By the time I got home, Uncle Red had cheered me up had me laughing and feeling better. As I got out of his truck, he waved goodbye, calling out, Make your mark, girl! Huey and his football friends stopped playing. Huey, Huey yelled out, Hey, Sassy, why don't you come and play with us? We need a girl post. His little mean, ugly friends laughed. Boy, did that make me mad. Sure, if we can use your big hair for the ball, I shouted back. His friends screamed with laughter. Huey got so mad he turned red, looking like a tomato with that big head. Ha! We were just about to go at each other when Mama called us inside. Late that night, I lay awake, staring out my window and thinking about Uncle Red's words. I could see myself dancing on the Milky Way, swirling like a twinkling shooting star. Next thing I knew, I was talking to myself out loud. I'm going to that audition, big feet and all. On the day of the tryouts, kids came from all over the city it was so crowded. Everyone was expected to wear black. But like Uncle Red, I picked my own color, bright yellow. And instead of standing in the back, I squeezed between Molly and Mona right in the front row. I ignored their snickering. Miss Catherine came in and introduced Mr. DeBato. Everyone applauded. Boy, was he short. Couldn't have been more than four feet, nine inches tall. He started walking down the roads, pacing back and forth, just looking at us. Then he stopped right in front of me and said, Young lady, why are you wearing that loud yellow leotard? I'll need you to put on, I'll need to put on sunglasses to see everybody else. Please go to the back row.
Molly Whis Molly whispered, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. At least he noticed me, I snapped. I put my hands on my hips and walked to the back. The first round of the audition was center floor exercises. Mr. DeBato walked around, prodding and poking, making corrections. He stopped once and looked right at me, but didn't say a thing. I held my breath as he dismissed almost half of the kids after the first round, but not me. Next was the adagio, the slow section. I stood as close to Mona as I could get and whispered, your little skinny short legs are gonna look like chicken wings next to mine. I'd rather look like a chicken than a turkey like you with that long neck, she answered. Talk to the hand, I told her. I took my leg up so high it got stuck. Luckily, I could balance on my other foot. So I just held it until Mr. DeBato remarked, Young lady, the exercise is finished. Oh, I jumped out of position. Show off, Molly grunted. Go, go. Myrna imitated a turkey. Then came the leaps across the floor. I took off like Jackie Joyner Cressy in the long jump at the Olympics. With one leap, I sailed in the air past all the other girls. Molly and Myrna watched, looking pea green with envy. When I finished, Mr. DeBotter yelled, Young lady, you must learn to dance to the music. Up on the count of one, dance on the count of three. Three, not five. You have the rhythm of a troglodyte. Again. I was crushed. As I passed Mina to get back in line, she said, next time, bring a big butt down by three. Your mama, I said. Ooh, did I wish I was a wizard. I turned them into two big fat frogs and tutus trying to hip hop. See the frogs down there? <laughs> By the end of the day, there were only seven of us left. Mr. Derbato called out everyone's name except mine and asked them to step forward. Standing alone, I really had to fight to hurl back my tears. Then I heard him say, thank you all for coming today. Keep working, keep trying. You are dismissed. Mr. Delbato said to me, Sassy, you have a great deal of potential. You have beautiful long arms and legs, but you flail about with no control. You must learn to use your feet better. And timing, timing. We have a lot of work to do when you come to Washington this summer. But please, please leave that loud yellow leotard at home. All you need to do to be noticed is walk into a room. Dismissed. He walked out. Jumping and shouting, I ran to the parking lot. I made it! I made it! Mama, I made it! Guess who was there to pick me up? Mama, Uncle Red, Huey, and half his football team piled in the back of the green truck on their way to a game. Everybody was so proud of me, even Huey. You go, Miss Bigfoot! Thank you, Mr. Bighead, I said. We all laughed. One month later, Mama and I boarded the plane for Washington, D.C. She held my hand as my heart pounded when we landed. At the school, there were young dancers from Russia, Mexico, France, China, Cuba, Brazil, New York, Texas, and long-legged me 
from Inglewood, California. In class the first day, Mr. DeBato introduced me to his 12-year-old protege, a boy named Dwight, who was 5 feet 10 inches tall. Dwight, I, have, I think I have found you a partner. Meet Sassy. Mama was right. Being told wasn't so bad after all, and neither was having a big head. By the end of summer, Huey had won the grand prize at space camp in Alabama, and I got to dance a duet with Dwight in the summer concert. When Dwight lifted me high in the air, I felt like I was dancing on the Milky Way. Me and my big feet, making my mark on the world. That is the end. I hope you like that story. I love that story. Sassy is such a character, but she teaches us that even though you might be different, you might look different from other people, that doesn't stop you from really achieving your dreams. And then sometimes the things that you might think are weaknesses are the thing that's really going to make the difference in your life. So I hope that you continue to love yourself, be safe, and I'll see you in this space tomorrow, Tuesday, with more Reading with Miss Hunter. Bye-bye.